right, I'm Mike Tyson, heavyweight champ of the world. I won titles, I had, I had everything in the world, but I still had that darkness in me. As the anticipation of a Doberman who's happened upon 210 pounds of unguarded meat. I did. The story of Mike Tyson's life is one of the most incredible, fascinating, and disturbing stories in the entire world of sport. It is a story rampant with monumental highs and devastating lows. The baddest man on the planet reinvigorated the sport when he burst onto the scene in 1985 and to this day remains the youngest heavyweight world champion in history at 20 years old. Michael Gerard Tyson was born in Brooklyn, New York in June of 1966. As a child, he endured a particularly difficult start to life, both in his upbringing and surroundings. He never knew his biological father, and his stepfather, Jimmy Kirkpatrick, abandoned the family when Tyson was just two years of age. Tyson was sexually abused by a stranger when he was seven, and his mother, who was an alcoholic, died when he was just 16. After his stepfather left, Tyson's mother moved the family to Amboy Street in Brownsville on the eastern side of Brooklyn. Brownsville was renowned for being the murder capital of New York, whilst also boasting the highest rate of incarceration and violent crime of anywhere in New York. It was here that Tyson's life would descend into a murky world of crime and rebellion. Everything was so hostile, cops always stopping you, ambulances always coming to pick up somebody, guns always going off, people are getting stabbed. He recalled, as a timid and pudgy kid with a lisp and glasses in one of the roughest areas in the country, it was either fight back or fade away. When he was 10, Tyson joined a local gang called the Jolly Stompers, who, despite the name, weren't quite as friendly as they sounded. By 11, he'd already been introduced to acid and cocaine. He'd also been arrested more than 30 times before he was even a teenager. I came from such a morbid home life that I couldn't live without feeling the hot stones and seeing the blazing fires. Hell was my life, it was my world, it was where I grew up. Mike said during one of his interviews, Given the stark to life that Tyson had and the things he saw growing up, it is perhaps unsurprising that he meandered towards a life of crime. However, things took an incredible turn when he was sent to a juvenile center in upstate New York. In 1981, a 12-year-old Tyson was sent to Tyrant School for Boys in upstate New York. Either by luck or good fortune, a certain Bobby Stewart was offering boxing lessons to inmates of the juvenile center, the same Bobby Stewart who fought at light heavyweight on the undercard of the Rumble in the Jungle in 1974. Clearly believing he had an incredible talent on his hands, Stewart reached out to legendary boxing manager Cus D'Amato, who had led people like Jose Torres and Floyd Patterson to world titles. D'Amato immediately took Tyson under his wing, eventually adopting him and moving him into his family home after his mother died. Teddy Atlas and Kevin Rooney were brought into overseas training, and a young Tyson became infatuated with the sport, watching old boxing videos religiously, learning the tricks of the trade from legends of a bygone era. By late 1981, still just 15 years of age, Tyson had already become World Junior Olympic Champion, knocking out Joe Cortez inside 8 seconds. A record, by the way, which still stands today. Hey, Cuz, 8 second knockout in the first round. 8 second knockout. With the help of his new team, he'd learned to channel the anger and frustration from his childhood and turn it into controlled yet frightening aggression in the ring. Tyson was a merciless aggressor. Although he could duck and weave very well, and he moved his feet fantastically, his style, in all honesty, was to beat the living hell out of whoever was stupid enough to get in the ring with him. From the second the bell rang he would fly recklessly forward, like a wild animal released from its cage. He had a super stiff jab, with devastating yet hauntingly accurate left and right hooks. He loved to get up close, snapping brutal uppercuts to the head and body, and, when he smelt blood, he was simply relentless. He had them even to challenge me in these fighters, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? With their primitive boxing skills, you know what I mean? They're as good as dead. In the early 1980s, the self-proclaimed baddest man on the planet embarked on a mastodonic rampage, tearing through the heavyweight division and obliterating all manner of opponents. 
between his first fight on March 6, 1985 and September 6, 1986, Tyson fought and won 27 times with a KO or TKO victory on 25 occasions. On the 22nd of November, 1986, less than two years after turning pro, he became the youngest heavyweight champion in boxing history. The 20-year-old pugilist put on a chilling display of aggression and precision, snatching the WBC title from reigning champion Trevor Burbick. Less than a year later, he became the first heavyweight to simultaneously hold the WBC, WBA, and IBF championship belts. In his prime, Tyson would reign as the undisputed champion for two years, six months, and ten days, conquering future legends of the sport such as Larry Holmes, Tyrone Spinks, and Frank Bruno along the way. However, the nearly untouchable platform to which he'd risen would soon crumble beneath his feet. By the late 1980s, Mike Tyson had undoubtedly written his name into boxing folklore. Many believed him to be the hardest-hitting heavyweight of all time, and on the surface, he seemed to be relishing the life of luxury which his sporting talents had provided. Behind the scenes, however, things were not as happy and stable as they seemed. The passing of Cus D'Amato in 1985 hit the fighter particularly hard. Shortly afterward, renowned boxing manager Don King ingratiated himself in Tyson's favor, eventually becoming his manager. Rumors of increased cocaine and alcohol abuse were rampant, and it turned out very much true. His new promoter and manager would fuel the darker side of Tyson's personality, encouraging partying, drugs, alcohol, and women. In 1990, a year after his messy divorce from Robin Givens, Tyson would suffer his first defeat in the ring, a relatively one-sided clash with James Buster Douglas, which genuinely shocked the world. Tyson would never recover from the loss to Douglas, and it was but the start of a meteoric downfall. Following allegations from Desiree Washington in July of 1991, Tyson was charged with rape and subsequently sentenced to six years in prison. After being released and maintaining his innocence, Tyson mounted a comeback, but it was short-lived. A rivalry with Evander Holyfield resulted in back-to-back -back losses, the second by a disqualification for biting his opponent's ear off. It was, ultimately, a rather sad and anticlimactic end for one of the greatest heavyweight fighters of all time, and his legacy will be forever tarnished. However, he will go down in the annals of boxing history as one of the most explosive, entertaining, and hard-hitting heavyweights the world has ever seen.